Hi dear friends, welcome to the CSS Learners Academy after a long time indeed. Today I am going to talk about the next lecture of the current affairs. In the first lecture, we have discussed uh, the first topic of current affairs, which is the politics among uh, the domestic affairs of Pakistan. Today, <clears throat> today I am going to discuss the second portion of the same topic and inshallah I will uh, complete the topic today because uh, as I have discussed earlier in the first topic that this topic is not as important uh, as other topics of current affairs are because generally questions are not asked on the topic of politics from uh, the domestic affairs of Pakistan. But now keeping in view the ongoing scenario especially with respect to the politics I think that a question might be asked in upcoming papers of 2021 or even in 2022. So today I am talking about the second portion which will uh, completely describe uh, the politics, uh, the political structure of Pakistan from 1997 uh, till update. Why I started it from 1997 onwards because historical questions are generally not asked in the papers of current affairs. But why we have started from 1997 is that because it is the time period when we have uh, uh, observed a democratic transition being taking place in Pakistan for the first time. I mean generally a question might be asked regarding what happened in the aftermath of uh, 1971 general election which were the first elections of Pakistan and the constitution building of 1973 but these questions might be asked only in the paper of Pakistan affairs when we are talking about the current affairs only current scenarios will be discussed but they can be linked to some kind of event which has happened in the history and that might not go beyond 1997 so let's start uh, after the year 2007 as we have discussed earlier that the situation was escalating inside the country people were demanding uh, you know uh, president Pervez Musharraf to resign as uh, the president of Pakistan and to uphold the general election the first tenure of uh, the democratic transition as we might say that started in the year 2002 with the general election of 2002 and completing the tenure of five years until 2007. Now uh, the uh, famous political parties, People's Party and uh, PMLN, both of them join hands to overthrow the government of uh, Pervez Musharraf. In, uh, uh, and as we have discussed about the role of uh, Supreme Court, that Supreme Court was not happy with General Musharraf because of some discontent with the Chief Justice, the then Chief Justice of Pakistan, Iftikhar Muhammad Chaudhary. So Supreme Court supported the both political parties and ultimately uh, we arrived at uh, a situation where it was deemed to have elections, uh, general election in the year 2008. A very uh, unfortunate incident happened in December 2007 when on the 27th of December 2007 uh, Benazir Bhutto, the daughter of uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who was the Prime Minister of Pakistan and the granddaughter of Shanawaz Bhutto who was uh, the Nizam of the state of Junagar before the creation of Pakistan. He was the administrator of uh, Junagar which was called as Nizam at that time and he was the grandfather of Benazir Bhutto. So Benazir Bhutto was uh, uh, murdered in Rawalpindi, uh, target killing it can be said and uh, that incident uh, changed the overall sympathies of the people especially towards Pakistan People's Party. Some analysts believe that it helped People Party uh, to gather support which was required to win the elections of 2008. Anyhow, in the next year uh, 2008, February 18, 2008 general elections were held and Pakistan People's Party came out at, as victorious. Although they didn't got the majority government, uh, I mean the two-third majority in the parliament, but a coalition government was formed and uh, pre President Asif Ali Zardari, Asif Ali Zardari was elected as the president of Pakistan, whereas uh, Yusuf Reza Gilani was elected as the prime minister. Later on in August 2008, we see that the differences um, uh, grew among PMLN and Pakistan People's Party. 
and because of that differences uh, pmln quit the coalition with pakistan people's party and they were then the opposition now some of the famous incidents of uh, the next year 2009 number 1 is the launching of operation against militancy uh, inside waziristan let me clarify this point uh, further that afghanistan issue was still ongoing and the global war against terrorism was ongoing inside afghanistan uh, it had effect on pakistan directly it was the tenure when pakistan faced the most brutal suicide attacks all over the country these attacks were not only targeted towards the army personnel but the civilians as well and some of the devastating attacks uh, have happened uh, like in a complete sequence we we might have one or two suicide bombings on a daily basis we have lo- lost plenty of our civilians our army personnel and uh, the loss to infrastructure is another thing so this time uh, the people's party coming into the government first of all they started they initiated Uh, the uh, operation against militants inside uh, waziristan the operation was launched against ttp or famously known as tehreek e taliban pakistan in the same year 2009 we have another important issue to discuss in october 2009 carry luger bill was signed which is known as the en- enhanced partnership act with pakistan 2009 carry luger bill uh, was generally a kind of bill which stated that if pakistan would help uh, americans in the fight against terrorism inside pakistan then american uh, government is uh, ready to give pakistan 7.5 billion dollars in a tenure of 5 years it means that united states was going to pay a certain amount on annual basis and in return pakistan would be asked to help united states in curbing the terrorism inside uh, fata especially which uh, the americans term these areas as the safe havens of terrorism inside pakistan now the bill uh, was very controversial because the government uh, said that okay the bill is fine people's party uh, uh, raised their voice in favor of the bill but there were many people including the journalists um, the people of pakistan the military forces of pakistan who believed that the bill is against the sovereignty of pakistan because it had certain conditions attached to the bill it was not only to fight the terrorism uh, you know inside pakistan or the or to curbing the safe havens inside pakistan but it was going to give more and more power and authority to the civilian government over the military forces let me ask you this army and police both are related to the defense of pakistan now we have a history of conflicts on the international forum where the military of pakistan had played a very important role and they have safeguarded the national interest of pakistan i am not saying that they have not did anything wrong i am not saying that there is no thing uh, there is nothing that pakistan army is accountable for but on a general perception we can say that the result is obvious our country is safe even today when pakistan is burdened with many of the things which we will discuss later in our lectures but let us discuss or let us think about another defense force which is police police is responsible for the internal security of our country working directly under the interior ministry of uh, pakistan which means that under the civilian command what is the result of that what is the outcome of that in many areas police has been working uh, you know and providing uh, the citizens with uh, what it was mandated for in the constitution of pakistan but in the other areas police force is just being used as a proxy of politicians weaking the weak structure of our judicial system depends on the police force the police force we will, we will talk about the judicial system of pakistan uh, and in uh, a great detail in criminology but generally all of us know that the police force is not working as uh, they were expected to work there are several factors there are several factors to that but do you think keeping in view the political control over the police force that the armed forces should also be under the political control now 
what does the constitution says the constitution says that the army is reported army uh, is uh, has to work under the civilian command and they need to report to civilian command and that army is already doing the president of pakistan who is the commander in chief of the armed forces the president of pakistan who is the personnel that the army chief is reported to he is the defense secretary and defense secretary uh, sorry defense minister defense minister is the elected representative defense secretary is the member of bureaucracy so constitutionally army is already working under the domain but the kerry luger bill especially stated about the enhanced control of civilian forces uh, on pakistan army because army was doing a great job inside afghanistan and to safeguard pakistan from the threat which was not only external but unfortunately internal threat as well and i would like to say here that the threat was not only because of the enemies of pakistan but because of some of the trusted allies another important issue that was raised in the uh, period of pakistan people's party was to console the baloch people who were uh, you know saddened and who were very uh, you know um, who were very angry about the behavior of the state uh, towards the balochis especially after the martyrdom of uh, a baloch leader a famous baloch leader in 2006 uh, in 2006 nawab akbar bukti now people's party because uh, uh, they had to work to you know overcome that uh, condition or the feeling of dissent among the baloch population they started a program known as the aghaz huquq balochistan package aghaz huquq balochistan package contained uh, several provisions for the balochis especially and uh, we will discuss this issue in detail when i would be delivering a separate uh, separate lecture on balochistan issue balochistan issue is very important and from uh, the creation of pakistan 1947 until this moment and now balochistan has become even more important because of cpac so we will discuss balochistan in detail and there i will uh, discuss briefly about the aghaz huquq balochistan package on december 16 2009 the supreme court of pakistan passed a, a historic judgment in the judgment of december 2009 supreme court stated that the nro which was granted by the government of parvez musharraf to the leaders of pakistan people's party and pmln stand null and void it means that now nro would be thought as never have been ex- existed when there was no nro it means that the cases which were filed by the people's party against pmln and pmln against people party would be uh, you know rise again and their status uh, as they were you know acquitted from all the criminal activities that each party accused the other stand at as null and void it was a, a kind of alarming decision because government was not expecting that to happen i mean people's party was in the government and there were cases of um, uh, they were filed by pmln against people party while pmln was in opposition and people's party had filed cases against pmln uh, general parvez musharraf have given them uh, nro known as the national reconciliation ordinance now after that uh, when supreme court passed this uh, decision this judgment it was a kind of chaos both for both the political parties on the 30th december 2009 the 7th nfc award was issued nfc is the Nas- national finance commission award we will discuss this issue in the next lecture which is go- which is going to be on the economy of pakistan so the 7th nfc award was issued in december 2009 8 april 2010 it was the day when a landmark historic amendment was passed by the parliament of pakistan known as the 18th amendment of the constitution of pakistan uh, right now i shouldn't say anything about 18th amendment because it is very important topic and i would be delivering a separate lecture on 18th amendment uh, right now there is a discussion about rolling back the 18th amendment but it is not going to happen it does not seem probable 
I mean, this is an amendment and it cannot be rolled back without the approval of the parliament. It cannot be rolled back by just an ordinance or something like that. Number one. Number second is that although there are some negative strings attached with the 18th amendment, but there is so much positive amendments that we cannot roll back the entire amendment. Uh, what can be done here is that, uh, you know, considering some of the features of 18th Amendment that uh, are not uh, so much, uh, uh, you know, um, fruitful as they were expected in the 2010. I mean, from 2010 until 2020, we had whole uh, 10 years to see the effects of 18th Amendment. And unfortunately, what was expected or forecasted in 2010, we have not achieved that. Uh, we have not achieved even a little of that. So um, I think that there are some things which need to be considered, but rolling back the overall 18th Amendment is not possible. 4th of January 2011, Governor of Punjab Salman Taseer was gunned down by his own guard Mumtaz Kadri. He was speculated to have been supporting the Blasphemy Act of Pakistan. Governor Salman Taseer was of the view that the Blasphemy Act needs to be reconsidered, whether this should be done by the people, whether if there is a kind of uh, Blasphemy Act being happening somewhere in the country, what should be the rule regarding it? Should we, uh, you know, just arrest those people and to, uh, you know, uh, produce them before uh, the court, before the court so that the judge can decide or who will be the authority to decide? whether a blasphemy act has happened or not but unfortunately what was happened uh, as a result was that Mumtaz Kadri who was being paid by the Pakistani government to protect the man the very man that he killed 2011 is a very important year not only because of the internal conflicts or situation that was arising but before because of the external things that was happening on 2nd May 2011, CIA launched a secret operation and killed Osama bin Laden in that operation inside a compound near Aptabad. It was speculated that uh, Pakistan army or um, intelligence was not informed about that operation uh, because they believed that Pakistan might be <coughs> helping Osama bin Laden in hiding inside Pakistan. The American narrative in those days about uh, Pakistan being the safe haven for militants uh, was uh, like it was proved uh, by and the international community believed that whatever Americans were saying was right because Osama bin Laden, the leader of uh, uh, Taliban, Tariq Taliban Afghanistan, the leader of Tariq Taliban Afghanistan was hiding inside uh, a compound in Aptabad. Therefore, after this incident, the relationship between United States and Pakistan had to be sore, and it did. So a related development uh, happened in the aftermath of this attack, which is known as the Memo Gate scandal. On 17 November 2011, this incident happened. Uh, Mansoor Ijaz, who was a businessman working inside the United States, he stated uh, that uh, the ambassador the Pakistani ambassador to United States, um, uh, Hussein Haqqani, has actually contacted uh, the commander Mike Mullen and he has uh, asked Americans to help to avert uh, a possible military coup inside Pakistan. That was humiliating for Pakistan that an incident happened like Osama bin Laden was killed um, the uh, international coalition was searching for Osama bin Laden for the past eight years and then they found uh, that man inside Pakistan uh, what has been the famous story and after that the situation has been so tense inside Pakistan be uh, between military and uh, the civilian government that the civilian government is seeking the help of United States to avert the possible uh, military coup attempt. Another important incident have happened in 2011, which is known as the Salala base attack. In Mohammed Agency, uh, the northwest area of Pakistan, there were Pakistani check posts to keep check on the border crossings between Afghanistan and Pakistan. The US military, NATO forces and ISAF, which is uh, which was the body helping the American, uh, helping the Afghani 
troops to be trained. Uh, these ISAF forces and NATO forces conduct a military sti- strikes on the Czech posts at Salala, which resulted in the martyrdom of 25 Pakistani soldiers. This was greatest of the events that were happening in 2011. Pakistan, in retaliation to that attack, stopped the NATO supply, uh, the supply route. They blocked the supply routes both in Turbat and Torkham. American supply, as we all know, that Afghanistan is not related to uh, the sea. Therefore, they were depending on Pakistan uh, for their supply of the weapons, uh, arms and ammunition to Afghanistan through Pakistan. So Pakistan blocked that supply and it remained blocked for one year until the Secretary of State of United States apologized for what had happened in the Salala base attack. On 19 June 2012, Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani was uh, disqualified as Prime Minister of Pakistan and the Member of Parliament because of uh, the contempt of court. The charges on the contempt of court was that he was not able uh, to implement the decision of the Supreme Court of Pakistan regarding the National Reconciliation Ordinance or the NRO. February 18. February 18, 2013 is the most important date in uh, this discussion because it was the time when uh, the contract of Gawadar port was formally awarded to China. Pakistan awarded the contract to operate Gawadar uh, to China in the February 2013, uh, exactly after 10 years of the decision. The decision of uh, operating the Gawadar uh, or, or uh, awarding the contract of Gawadar to China was taken in 2003 in the government of General Pervez Musharraf. The idea of CPEC was not in the way as it is today. <clears throat> but the operating Gawadar uh, was uh, already under discussion and it uh, Pervez Musharraf was the first one uh, to initiate this discussion which then um, was uh, you know proceeded further by People's Party and then finally it was approved in the period of PMLN in the year 2015. 11th, uh, 11th March 2013, President Asif Ali Zardari finalized the agreement of Iran-Pakistan gas pipeline which is a $7.5 billion project. This pipeline which is also known as the peace pipeline was inaugurated uh, by both Iran and Pakistan. It was basically uh, signed to uh, help Pakistan to cope with the energy re- uh, needs which was a dire need at that time. Later on, Iran-Pakistan gas pipeline has faced several challenges and it is continuously facing the challenges. The general elections were happened in 2013 and uh, Pakistan uh, Muslim League Noon came out as the victorious. They have completed their tenure of five years in 2018. In 2014, uh, December 16 December 2014, we were against uh, we were again under uh, a military attack that happened inside Peshawar. It is one of the worst in the world's history when the militants attack a school, army public school Peshawar and they massacred children disproportionately. In the aftermath of that attack, the Pakistan uh, government and military both sat together and formulated a plan which is known as National Action Plan, NAP. National Action Plan is a 20 points agenda where military and government decided how to proceed further safeguard Pakistan from this militancy that we have been facing since long. Pakistan army launched two operations known as the Operation Zerbe Azb and Operation Radul Fasad inside the country uh, to finally control this uh, rising militancy. In the year 2015, April 2015, President Xi Jinping of China visited Pakistan on a two days visit. In this visit, the CPEC was signed. CPEC, which is known as the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, was finalized in the year 2015. Basically, it was a project of $46 billion, which has now reached an amount of $62 billion and uh, some of the projects were known as early harvest projects which helped Pakistan to deal with the uh, energy crisis, the rising energy crisis and uh, then there are other rail and road projects from Gawadar to Kashgar. 
CPEC is another important topic and obviously there would be a separate lecture on CPEC. In the year 2017, the cases were initiated against uh, the government of PMLN. Several personalities were named including the Prime Minister of the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mia Muhammad Nawaz Sharif. Supreme Court of Pakistan, it is generally discussed uh, as a judicial activism. Uh, it is a term which is known as, uh, you know, when judiciary is doing something out of the box. But I would like to say that nothing has happened out of the box here. Judicial activism is simply exercising the authority of Supreme Court uh, in safeguarding the fundamental rights of Pakistan. Why it is something new for Pakistan? Uh, because unfortunately our courts have never did that. I mean it is the responsibility of the courts to safeguard the fundamental rights of people by taking the suomoto notices which is in their authority but Supreme Court uh, or the higher court have, Supreme Court has the authority. Supreme Court has never done that and when they started doing that it was something new for Pakistanis and they all uh, there was a perception of a judicial activism being going on or uh, the political rivalry or the target uh, you know operation against PMLN uh, the joint investigation teams were made uh, to you know uh, finally formulate what has happened how it has happened who is the culprit and all that in the year 2018 we have seen that uh, in March 2018 we had the 26th amendment to the constitution of Pakistan when FATA was aligned with KP. It is a landmark achievement of uh, Pakistan Muslim League Noon. As we talk about the achievement of People's Party in 18th amendment, it is one of the biggest uh, you know, uh, success in the history that, Pakist that Pakistani parliament approved uh, FATA to be a part of um, uh, KP. FATA have the seven FATA which was previously uh, regarded as a part of Pakistan but the rules and regulations or the constitution of Pakistan was not applied uh, in its true essence as it was applied in the provinces because FATA was kind of a separate territory. Now after inclusion of FATA inside uh, in KP it is also a province of Pakistan obviously it is a part of province of Pakistan the seven uh, agencies of FATA have been decided to be converted into the districts uh, and the further administrative changes are currently underway but it was a landmark decision. The tenure of the government was ended and general election were, were held in 2018 and Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf which was uh, the opposition in the time of um, in the government of PMLN came to power. And here we discuss another important issue which is known as the uh, politics of dharna, dharna system. Uh, when the large crowds uh, come together uh, and stage a procession or protest against the policies of the government. This uh, politics of dharna actually started by PMLN in the government uh, when the government of uh, People's Party was there. Uh, when the Nawaz Sharif was the first one who came out from Lahore uh, along with the procession and they were coming to uh, Rawalpindi uh, to stage a protest against the policies of Pakistan People's Party. Then the same thing happened when PMLN was in the government, when PMLN was in government and uh, PTI was in opposition. And then the same thing is happening even now when PTI is in the government and uh, JUI, they have already recorded a protest, uh, they have came to Islamabad, recorded a protest and now they are planning it again. So this is the overall political scenario that uh, we have discussed now from 2007 uh, until 2018. In the previous lecture, we have discussed from 97 onwards. So now I have discussed the complete political history of Pakistan from 1997 uh, until 2018. I think that uh, I think that these important events um, uh, they are brief. Ob obviously, we cannot go into the detail because it is a wastage of time. We should only concentrate to the topics that may be asked in the paper. Uh, in CSS, uh, currently we are preparing for 2021 and 2022. So I think that the issues that I have discussed already will, uh, will be helpful for you in your preparations in the uh, for the upcoming papers. So in the next lecture, we are going to discuss the economy of Pakistan and the uh, years onwards, I mean 2018, 2019, 20 and 21, 
I would be covering these four years with respect to the politics as well when I would be delivering a lecture on the economy of Pakistan. Economy of Pakistan will not be discussed with respect to the historical perspective or something like that but we will only discuss the current scenario and we will link this scenario to some of the important events in the past like for example if uh, I, I, I am talking about IMF I would be giving a glimpse of the previous IMF programs and what effect they had uh, on the overall administrative structures of Pakistan. Like I always say that if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would like you all to subscribe because now uh, I am planning to complete the lectures in the least possible time. Um, uh, um, fortunately, uh, unfortunately, the date sheet of uh, PMS was announced and I was not able to deliver a lecture for so long. So now plenty of syllabus is pending and I am planning to cover it. So I think and I hope that I would be able to deliver two lectures on daily basis. So I would like you to remain in tech with the channel. Click the bell icon if you have not clicked because, because when the fresh lecture is uploaded, you will be able to. Uh, get a message a notification secondly as many aspirants have uh, asking me to start uh, a current affairs analysis on daily basis so now i am planning to deliver two lectures on daily basis which would be covering the current affairs one lecture would be about the current affairs uh, of daily current affairs i mean the daily news and analysis of national affairs and international affairs it would be uh, a minimum possible time uh, the video would be comprising of minimum possible time and it will help you in getting a know-how of what is happening on the national and international forum on on a daily basis if you have any questions you can ask me contact me through my mobile number or uh, in the comment section or facebook twitter etc etc stay blessed allah hafiz